Hello, my name is Miguel Ambrana, and today I'm going to talk about a joint work with Masayuki Abe and Miyako Kubo on black box extension of non-interactive zero knowledge argument systems and signatures directly from uh, simulation soundness. So let's start. So I will I will start by defining what non-interactive zero knowledge arguments are, and for this let me first define the zero knowledge arguments. Well, zero knowledge arguments were first defined by Goldwasser, Mikali, and Rakoff in 1985 in the seminar work The Knowledge Complexity of Interactive Proof Systems. I'm going to explain what they are with an example. So let's consider an NP language so that is uh, a set of words X for which there exists a witness such that certain relation is satisfied, relation R. And in, in uh, these systems, there are two parties, the prover and the verifier. The prover has an instance X and a witness, W, of the fact that X is in the language L. And the verifier wants to check whether X is in the language or not. And because the verifier doesn't have the witness, it may be skeptical about this fact. So what can they do? Well, they can engage into a zero knowledge argument protocol. In this case, it's going to be a protocol where they send messages back and forth. And at some point, the verifier will either accept or reject the proof. Okay, so now let, let's consider non-interactive zero knowledge proof system arguments or proof systems. In non-interactive arguments, there is uh, one single message sent from the prover to the verifier. There are several models for non-interactive zero knowledge arguments, and we are going to focus on the common reference string model, where there is a common reference string, there is a certain piece of information trustly generated, actually generated by this algorithm called CRS or CRS generation, and this is given to both parties. Now, using this information, the prover can execute what is called the, the pro, pro, proving algorithm that takes the CRS, the instance, and the witness, and produces a proof, and the verifier will run the verification algorithm. So in the zero knowledge proof system, there are usually other two algorithms, a total of five, the CRS simulation and the proof simulation. I will talk about those later. Zero knowledge argument systems must satisfy three properties. The first one is completeness which uh, says that if the prover is honest and the verifier is honest, the prover should always be able to convince the verifier about the fact that some X is in the language if uh, the prover knows a witness for X. Soundness says that basically the prover cannot cheat, that uh, a prover should not be able to convince the verifier uh, about the fact that some X is in the language if X is not actually in the language. And zero knowledge basically says that the verifier cannot learn any more information apart from the fact that X is indeed in the language. So in particular, for example, the refer should not be able to learn any information about W. Zero knowledge proof systems are one of the most common building blocks in cryptography. I'm going to mention some of the applications. One of them is to go from passive security to active security. So once you have proven you have built a, a cryptographic primitive that is secure against honest but curious adversaries, you can use zero knowledge proofs to enforce honest beha behavior and therefore achieve active security. Security against adversaries that may behave ar arbitrarily. Also in authentication systems, you can prove that you should be, you should be allowed to perform some actions without uh, revealing any other information about your identity or why you should be able to, to do it. Or even in blockchain technologies, for example, to prove that certain transaction has been valid, or in a fair exchange, uh, there are, it's a hot topic now with a contingent payment. Uh, zero knowledge proof systems are also used there. But why do we need a non interactive property? Well, in the first work about non interactive proof systems, they gave this scenario where there are two mathematicians. One of them leaves for a long trip, and whenever he discovers a theorem, he writes a postcard to his friend proving the validity of the theorem in zero knowledge so that the friend doesn't really know why the theorem is proof, but is convinced about the fact that it's proof. It's uh, true. And uh, they, they argue that the non-interactive uh, property is required because this pro process of sending letters is non-interactive, it's monodirectional. Uh, by the way, uh, they say that they, they need to have played head and, heads and tails for a while. You can think of this as the common reference string generation. They both need certain piece of information that is trusted and shared by both. Well, this application may, may not seem uh, very appealing, but uh, actually zero-knowledge proof systems are very interesting because they have one unique property. 
which is uh, that they are transferable. If you're given a non-interactive proof, you can you can give it to a friend, and the friend will will be convinced about the validity of the statement as long as the, as this person trusts the CRS. And now let's talk about one of the properties that we study in this work, and uh, which is simulation soundness. Well, simulation soundness basically says that it is hard to compute proofs on false statements, even if you have Oracle access to some Oracle that performs simulated proofs. Okay, so more concretely, if there is a challenger and an adversary. The challenger runs this uh, CRS simulation algorithm, producing a CRS and a trapdoor that is going to be used by to simulate proofs. CRS is sent to the adversary, and now the adversary can perform queries. The adversary can choose arbitrarily instances x high, and uh, it will get as an answer a proof that has been simulated with this algorithm. Notice that this algorithm needs to use a trapdoor. Well, this step can be performed several times. Some models consider only constant simulation soundness, where this, this uh, step can only be performed a constant number of times. But we are going to consider the notion of unbounded simulation soundness, where the, the number of interactions is, is not specified. It can be polynomial in the security parameter. And the adversary, at the end of the game, has to produce a, a forgery. This is a, some instance x star and some proof pi star, such that x star has not been queried. And it's actually a false statement. It's not in the language. And the verification still holds. So the proof uh, still convinces a, a verifier of the fact that x is in the language. Well, we say some uh, NISC is, uh, satisfies the simulation soundness property if the probability of the event accept is negligible, considering all PPT adversaries. Well, simulation soundness has one nice property, which is that the, the non-interactive zero-knowledge argument system is non-malleable. This means that it's infeasible to change the statement on a proof. If you are given a proof for certain statement, it's hard to compute a proof on a related statement. And now let's see how simulation soundness can be achieved once you have a NISC. How can you upgrade the NISC in order to achieve simulation soundness? Well, there are many works uh, trying to do this. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few of them. So, For example, the work by Sahai in 1999. Uh, it is a construction that is based on the generation of multiple common reference strings of the original NISC, and uh, it results in a bounded simulation uh, sound NISC. So this O stands for one time simulation sound, but it can be lifted to a constant number of times. On the other hand, the work by DeSantis et al. is the first construction of unbound, unbounded simulations on NISC, and this work combines a pseudo-random function with a commitment scheme, and the essential idea of this work, well, they also use a pseudo-random generator, the essential idea of this work is to prove that certain statement is true or the PRF was computed correctly. And then they leverage this disjunction in order to achieve simulation soundness. Finally, I want to mention another idea, which was initiated by Jens Groth, and then followed by many other works. So, for example, here we cited the one by Hofheinz and Jagger, which is to combine the original NISC, the original statement, in the action with a signature scheme. They use a signature scheme to achieve simulation soundness. So now, uh, something is common to all these upgrades, which is uh, all attempts use signature-like primitives. And this uh, raises the question of whether they are needed or not. Can, can we build can we achieve simulation soundness without using a signature-like primitive or not? Well, in, or, in order to answer this question, we, we may try to build a signature scheme from every USS NISC. So can, can we do it? Can we build signatures from USS NISCs? Of course we can. Actually, we can do it from any NISC. Why? Well, because NISC implies one-way functions. For example, the CRS generation is a one-way function. And there is a big result in cryptography that says that one-way functions imply signatures. But this is not satisfying for us. This doesn't answer our question. So we need a signature with similar computation and space complexity. And there are some words that explore this idea. So I'm going to talk about a few, a few of them here. For example, Pelare and Goldwasser combine a pseudo-random function and a public key encryption scheme in the form of a commitment scheme in order to achieve a signature from a NISC. And what they do is they use the NISC to prove this relation here, and they show that this implies a signature. 
Another attempt by Katz and Vakun Tanatan builds a signature scheme by using the unbounded simulations on NISC to prove this relation here that involves a public encryption scheme and a target collision resistant function. Finally, let me mention this work by Jens Groot and Mary Muller from Crypto17, where they build a general framework for constructing signatures of knowledge based on succinct simulation extractable NISCs. And notice how the, their construction uh, requires the NISC be such that it not only supports uh, the original relation, but it also supports the, uh, this conjunction with a TCR. And now I, I want to, to, to point here that all these constructions of signatures from NISCs or from USS NISC, they require NISC su support certain specific relation or they require this language extension. So in this work, we focus on answering to two questions. One of them is whether the language extension is general or not, whether, for example, having any NISC, you can always modify it in such a way that you get the NISC support in this conjunction with a TCR. And uh, if, if this was possible, then, for example, the work by Groton Muller would explain why achieving simulation soundness and bond and simulation soundness is always done with using signatures. Basically, because once you have built a NISC, any NISC that is unbounded simulation sound uh, gives you a signature with the same uh, complexity. However, the answer to this question is uh, no, at least uh, not in a black box way. And that's one of the first results uh, of our work, one of the main results, several impossibility or possibility results of language extensions of NISCs in a black box manner. I will explain in a second what a black box language extension is. And the second question that we consider is whether we can do it without language extension. So now, given that uh, we cannot always extend NISCs, at least not in a black box way, can we build signatures uh, without uh, using the language extension? So from any NISC for a hard language, can we build uh, a sing if, if the NISC is unbound the simulation sound, can we build a signature scheme? And uh, we give a construction for this that I will explain at the end of this talk. And now, so let's explain what a black box language extension is. First, what do we mean by language extension? Well, I will explain it with an example, in this case, a disjunctive composition, but given two languages, uh, L and L hat. Uh, this is how we define the language extension for disjunction. So it's a basically the set of pairs of words where the first word is in L or the second is in L hat. And when we say black box extension of NISC, what we mean is, uh, or what we ask is whether there exists a compiler, in this case, we, I call it the disjunctive compiler, such that for any two languages, L and L hat, and given any two NISCs, the, the first one for L and the second one for L hat, this compiler builds a NISC for the disjunctive language defined here. Of course, we can consider other, other extensions like conjunction, for example, conjunction, instead of this action, so both both words uh, should be in the corresponding languages and others. And actually, in this work, uh, one of the main results is that we prove is that this action cannot be done in a black box way. However, it is well known that conjunction can be done. And actually, straightforward parallel composition works. What do I mean by this? Well, you can just generate a CRS for both NISCs and then prove both x and x hat under the corresponding NISC, and it can be proven. It's not hard to see that this is actually, uh, this defines a NISC uh, for the conjunction. So only if uh, both statements are true, uh, the verifier will, will accept this, this proof. Now let me start building figure one from our paper. So what we have seen so far is that conjunctive extension is possible. Well, I mean, this was known. So I'm gonna represent with black arrows straightforward results or, or known results. And of course, you can also go from an NISC to just one NISC, ignoring one of the clauses. Now let's consider the case of simulation soundness. It was first pointed out by Sahai in 1999 that simulation soundness is not preserved by this straightforward parallel composition. Why? Well, because an adversary can ask uh, the, the simulation oracle for proof on a pair, 
and then a different pair. And then the adversary can combine these two proofs, for example, as follows. And this is going to be a valid proof on a statement that was not queried. So this actually constitutes an attack to simulation soundness. So what we have seen now is that the same does not happen here. And at least the parallel composition does not work. And one of our results is that this, this is actually impossible. You, can, you cannot uh, compose in conjunction in a black box way and preserve the unbounded simulation soundness property. From this impossibility result, many others, other results follow. I'm going to try to give the intuition of how we can prove those, but this argument is a bit informal. I refer to our paper for more details. First of all, observe that from an USS NISC, you can go to USS NISC by ignoring one of the clauses. And from those on the right, you can go to those on the left by just not using the unbounded simulation soundness property. Now, given this, this this uh, direction should be impossible. Why? Because otherwise we would have a way of going from USS NISC to an USS NISC, which, which, which we would have shown it's impossible by just following this path. This observation leads to a very interesting result, which is basically that achieving sim unbounded simulation soundness cannot be done in a black box way. So it cannot be done even if you restrict to NISCs or to languages that have certain structure, like in this case, the conjunction. So of course it cannot be done in general. And now we are also gonna focus on other scenarios, for example, the disjunction extension or the label, label NISCs. So a label NISC is basically a NISC where the prover and the verifier take an additional input, which is a label, and forgeries in the unbounded simulation on this game um, must be new as a per instance label. So actually, you can you can use in your forgery an instance that was queried before if the label is different. In this work, we also prove the impossibility of the disjunctive composition from a label USS NISC, even when giving up the USS property and the label. This impossibility result has a side condition, which is that the languages must be hard, and here we use the standard definition of hardness of languages in cryptography, which is that it's hard to distinguish these instances from no instances. In other words, there are samplers that there are two samplers, one only samples these instances, the other only samples no instances, and their output is indistinguishable for any PPT distinguisher. Let me give you the intuition of how this impossibility result has been proven. So the first thing we do is to define the notion of legitimate CRS. So a CRS is said to be legitimate if it has been generated by, by the black box construction by just calling the CRS generation algorithms, either the one from the first NISC or the one from the second NISC. What we first show is that during verification, the compiler cannot use legitimate CRSs on verification calls that are successful. The second step is just to observe that because all successful verification calls are non-legitimate CRSs, then soundness must be compromised. In order to prove the first claim, we leverage the zero knowledge property that allows us to, to swap between legitimate CRSs and the simulated CRSs and the hardness of the languages that allows us to swap between yes instances and no instances. In the paper, the proof is done more formally and we, what we actually do is to define an oracle O that is sufficient to build a hard language L and in NISC for L, but such that any any possible compiler with access to O cannot be a NISC for the disjunctive extension. In our proof, the construction of the adversary against simulation soundness uses a new technique. Ba basically, we use a genuine prover to forge a proof on a no instance, and we simulate the oracle so that the no instance looks like a yes instance. So this actually um, eliminates the use of the p space power from the adversary, and we believe this can be useful or it can be applied to other impossibility results. Now let's go back to our figure and let me mention a couple of possibility results. So in the case, if we consider labeled and USS NISC, we show that this is indeed possible. So uh, what was impossible without labels, it is actually possible if you have labels. 
And furthermore, we give also these possibility results. You can, that basically says you can achieve labels uh, if you have this structure of an USS NISC. Furthermore, we consider these other extensions of label or an or unbounded simulation sound, and we give this a possibility result. We give a black box construction to go from or to get label at the cost of losing the disjunction. So basically, you can use one of the two statements as a label and the other as the language. Considering all straightforward relations that we can derive from those that we have proven, the picture would look as follows. And I just want to, to point out that in a black box way, a NISC and these two objects are essentially the same, NISC and an NISC, and also these three seem to be the, the same object modulo black box reduction. For future work, we leave uh, to prove uh, the missing relations here, which we believe are impossibilities. Now let me conclude the talk by explaining how we can build a signature scheme from every SS NISC for hard language. Notice that NISCs for languages that are not hard are not so meaningful. But basically look at the sign and algorithm. What we do is we simulate a proof on Y, but Y is a false instance. So this is the, we represent by D, the sampler of no instances given by the hardness of the language. So the, the main idea is that you simulate a proof on a false instance using the trapdoor. So the trapdoor is a signing key. And basically the, the unbounded simulation soundness game becomes the existential unforgeability game for the signature. So that's why this, this construction is secure. So I will conclude the talk now. This work started from the observation that all upgrades from NISC to achieve unbound simulation soundness, they use a signature scheme, or at least they leverage a signature-like primitive. And this seems to be a requirement, given that, as we have shown, once you have an unbound simulation sound NISC, you have a signature scheme, essentially. And uh, this signature is of the same computation and space complexity. In this work, we have also studied uh, composition of NISCs, in particular black box composition. And although several methods of composition exist, for one example is uh, CDS94, that is a composition method for Sigma protocols. And as you, as you know, Sigma protocols can be used to build non-interactive serial proof systems using the fiat schema heuristic. Uh, all existing methods for, for general composition of NISCs, they assume certain specific structure on the NISC. And what we have shown in this work is that if you don't assume any structure on the NISC, there are many compositions that are impossible. So for example, this junction cannot be performed in a black box way, or even conjunction if you want to preserve the simulation sound, uh, soundness property. So the conclusion is that in new settings and under new assumptions, uh, you will have to make extra effort to build the NISCs of general expressivity. So uh, that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much uh, for your attention.